Hello, welcome to the Locked In Podcast. I'm Kyle Crutchmer. Alongside with me is uh, Nick Piccinini. And uh, we're just going to start talking about some some shit. So um, we had someone ask us what our, our favorite John Smith story was from college. So I think we're going to go ahead and get into that. Nick, what was something that, um, you know, you remember maybe a story or something that Coach Smith said, you know, while you were in college? Man, yeah, there's a... There's a lot of John Smith stuff. Bro. There's a lot of John Smith stuff. Yeah. There's a lot that we can, I mean, go off of. But I think for me, the the most fun and the most cool things that was traveling with John Smith. Yeah. You know, the airports. Yeah. Airports were fun. Yeah, the airports. The airports were fun. To spin off that, I have I have a I have a story that uh, that became with traveling when uh, when I was in school. So we were soft. I was a sophomore. You were younger than me. I don't even think you were in school yet. Yeah. Uh, we traveled to Pittsburgh, and uh, we wrestled Pittsburgh and Penn State back to back. I think Pittsburgh was a Friday, Penn State was a Sunday. Um, we were really young. We were soft team full of sophomores, and we we wrestled uh, Pittsburgh on Friday night. We got beat for the first time, and and like I think it was like sixteen years or something by then. And Coach Smith was pissed. He was livid. He was so mad. And then, uh, so we travel the next day. You know, obviously we get beat. We travel. He's, you know, he's fired up in the back saying things to us, you know, calling us out. And now we're going to wrestle, we're gonna go wrestle Penn State, who was, that year was probably their best team that I ever wrestled against. Um, they had Ed Ruth and all those guys. So um, we, go wrestle, we go wrestle Penn State. And uh, remember, we traveled. We started traveling on Wednesday. We wrestled Friday. And then we had to wrestle again on Sunday, so we had to make weight back to back, right? And uh, we go out and we get we get beat up, we get beat up by Penn State, you know, in their home crowd, which is one of the coolest crowds we've ever I've ever wrestled in. They, there was a whiteout, so they were all they all wore white. And uh, so after the duel, we go back to the hotel. We get there as soon as we walk in the lobby. Coach Smith's like, you know, put your fucking running shoes on right now. Put your running oh, shoes man. on. And uh, you know, you know so going yeah, down. it's going down, Ooh. right? So we all we all like, man, damn. So we run up to the st- we run upstairs, you know. We have cuts on us, we're you know bruised up, weight cut. You know, you see, you're you're pretty fatigued from the travel. And then uh, we go we go uh, put our run shoes on. He meets makes us meet him down in the the workout facility in the hotel, and he just puts this random workout together where we're uh, you know we're running sprints. And it's getting real hot in this little room because there's like 15, 16 of us in there. And I remember one guy on our team, I'm not going to mention any names, but he's like hyperventilating. It gets so hot. He like opens the door. He's deep breathing. Like it was hard, man. He had us doing push-ups randomly, 100-pound curls, all this crazy stuff. So after that, anyways, we do that workout. That workout gets done. And then uh, we go back. We have to leave the next morning. At a, we have a 6, a 6 a.m. flight to Chicago, get to Chicago, eight-hour layover. We're all sitting there, you know, how we bunched up and mm-hmm. kind of sat there as a group. He walks up to us and he goes, hey, there's a pool at this hotel that's in the, I guess that's in the, uh, in the airport. And he's like, we're going to swim. So we go down there. And, I mean, this is all within, you know, f- about 72 hours. So we, uh, you know, we, we put our, our swim stuff on and, we swim for like 45 minutes. Then we get done with that, which the swim workout was crazy. I was about to drown. And then we get done with that, and then we fly home. We get to Oklahoma at 2 a.m., and then we get to gallagher and he makes us run stadiums when we get there. He put your running shoes on. We're like, dude, this is when I finally was like getting pissed. Yeah, you I was like, what the hell? And then, uh, yeah, so we put on, put our running shoes on. It's dark in Gallagher, so he's like, you know, we're like, how are we going to run stadiums? We can't see. He's like, well, turn your fucking lights on. So we turned our, we had our phone lights looking at our feet while we're running these stadiums, um, which was made for an eventful trip. It's probably the hardest trip I've ever been on. So um, that's my John Smith story that I remember. Yeah, I'm happy, uh... Man, I'm I'm kind of happy I I wasn't a part of that. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah that was a difficult one, bro. That, that was yeah. a difficult one. But you know, obviously, very similar stuff like that. Um, you know, 
like scuffle. You get done with scuffle. It's New Year's, New Year's Day. You know, you finish your tournament. You're chilling. You know, you go out to eat with your with your teammates. You know how it is. And you know that next morning, he's like, everyone, you know, wake up. We're going to the the gym. And I'm sure you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So at Southern Scuffle, it's in Tennessee, Chattanooga. There's this gym that's literally maybe a mile away from the the hotel that we stay at and um man he's like just like you know we go out we do well at the scuffle pretty much every single year we yeah, yeah, we yeah. we kill it but man he he just he won't he won't let you he won't let you you know catch a break not not at all so you know it's new year's but that don't matter so we go to the, to this gym and this is a funny story we're running on the treadmills. He's having everyone do do circuits and uh, all but the circuits were always so random. Actually, you were th- this is you were we were on the same team. This was this was the year that we were together. Yeah, first of all, definitely <laughs> so random. Like what is definitely this circuit ra- right now? Yeah, he and you can see him like sitting <laughs> behind like plotting like uh yeah. Well, go- next you're gonna you're gonna run. Another sprint. You're like, dude, what? I just ran a sprint. You yeah. know, like he's all over the place with that. Stuff. But you ain't gonna say nothing. No, you're gonna. You're do not. It. You're doing. You, he tells you, you to feel go. Like it's the end. Yeah. yeah Maybe tell you sure. go run through that wall. It's like, all right, time to go run through this I'm wall. Try to We're gonna. Run yeah. The wall for I'm, sure. I'm that, doing. He had that effect on a lot of for us. Sure. For sure. But so I'm. So we're we're running. You're actually on the team. I I believe this year, my freshman year, uh, retro freshman year. And uh, he sees these machines in the corner. And, you know, they got little bars on them. And you, you hop on, you strap yourself in, you kind of climb, you know, mm-hmm. start climbing. Little do we find out to know it's called the Jacob's Ladder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> we have one of those AK. And everyone's got them now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess we didn't have them at the time. And he's like, what are these things? You know? No, he was a killer. Nolan Boyd. He's like Boyd. Yeah. Nolan, our, our teammate, Nolan Boyd. Shout out Nolan Boyd. He's a fireman now in uh, Tulsa. And uh, he tells Nolan, he's like, Nolan, get on this thing. And Nolan gets on and he's going. I mean, he's going for a while. And if anybody knows Nolan, you know that this dude has got a gas tank and he's getting tired yeah, on there. A, I'm yeah, like, he's a savage. He doesn't really, uh, he doesn't get tired. No. Man. He, he was the guy in the wrestling room when we would do those 20 minute goes. Yeah. That you would like, he'd be like looking at you, and you'd be like looking around, like I don't, I don't see you, man. I ain't going with you. Today, yeah, because you, know? you go hard. But yeah, he uh, he got tired on the Jacob's ladder. Got tired on the Jacob's ladder, and I'm watching, I'm looking, you know, getting off the treadmill, about to go on there. I'm like, oh man, like you know. And this is after the tournament, and scuffle, scuffle is a, it's a good tournament to Tough. to wrestling. You know, it's a it's, it's a little simulation it's a tournament of a, where you you really see where you're at. In, in in your your development, yeah. especially your early you know your early stages, right. and you know if you're if you're ranking a guy, normally at for, for us anyways, if by the time the scuffle hit, after the scuffle, you kind of knew who was gonna be the guy, the yeah. starter. There was definitely a general direction on where the coaching staff was going with that right. team. You know. Yep. So, man, he he's having us jump on these Jacobs ladders, and he's like, man, what what are these machines and I remember him saying, he's like, hey, we need to get those. When we get back, we're ordering these. I remember, yeah. And literally, like, I don't know. 48 maybe, hours later, there was two of them there. sitting in the gym. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. And he got obsessed with them, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was like, hey, after practice, oh, yeah. 30 minutes on the gym. I think he had, like, a feet or, like, a stair number he liked, if I remember correctly. Ah, oh, man, I'm sure. Yeah. But, yeah, man, Coach Smith – um, there's a lot of stories that yeah. we could go on and on the about goat. that guy. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's the, goat. the goat, man. He, uh, you know? He's actually hanging up on this wall. Yeah, right uh, there. Right there. So, um, But I, we also had another question, you know, that I thought was pretty pretty funny um, that I definitely want to go and see maybe what yours was. Um, what was your funniest um, moment on the strip? And it doesn't even have to be the strip. Let's take it a little more generic. Um, let's <laughs> Bro, let's. What was your let's go. craziest story um, in Stillwater, Oklahoma, that you can remember that maybe uh, wasn't, I guess, on the illegal side? Yeah, for sure. I got I got one. This the really this story stands out to me because it's just it's 
it to me is funny as hell, man. Yeah. So, you know, uh, man, I'm trying to think of the frat. I think it was maybe like, um, oh, man, I forget this the this frat fight out yeah. some fight. some some yeah, some yeah, shit yeah. like that. Yeah. So, uh, we take that highway to get to their to their house, um, and they have this. So the dreams. It, it's something like something yeah, like it's one of there. those names. Yeah, yeah you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. So, we had a uh, when we were in college where we partied at a lot of these frats they had like names for yeah. fields and houses like the blue house go to the field of dreams we just at the field of dreams we're yeah. gonna you know do whatever we're doing at the field of dreams <laughs> but you know what we were yeah doing. you know what we were doing at the field of dreams but yeah so <laughs> keep going so we're chilling you know obviously college kids having fun enjoying we're drinking and you know getting lit and uh I forget who I was with. I'm not going to name any names, but I was with a couple of, of buddies, you know, and uh, we start, you know, ravaging through this house, through the, the, the frat house. Um, and this is the off-campus house, so it's someone's actual house, house, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, we're, and uh, you know, we're, everyone's upstairs and there's a downstairs. So a couple of, you know, us, we go down into the into their like little basement that they got. And uh, we start looking around. All of a sudden, we hear like chirping, like chirp, cheep, cheep, cheep. I'm like, "Yo, what is that?" We hear it more. Open up a door, cheep, cheep, dude. Someone in the frat house had like a cage full of baby ducks. No way. Yes, like like baby like, ducklings. Yes, ducklings, bro. Like little ducklings. Like the yellow ones. Yes, really? little. Yes, That's little crazy. yellow ones, bro. And uh, you still wanna. <laughs> yeah, bro. You did. me for sure and, you and did i would have probably right, taken let me, all of them for sure and let, let, let me get this out before this even goes any further no animals were hurt in, in this in this yeah there was no I, animals I, hurt. i'm the type I'll i love call peter. i love yeah i'll yeah. call peter if, if somebody's sure. hurting the animals yeah for sure but and I we love you, you have a kind you know, heart that, yeah that I, had we're a gonna take care 10 hours in him yeah before you yeah. die <laughs> Yeah, oh, he was eating we good. <laughs> yeah, we we're gonna take care of him. We all feed him whatever he needs to be That's fed. Good as he gonna eat for sure. For so sure. it's late now, you know, because we're we're for us to for us to go out and start scavenging scavenging around this house. Like we were turned up, you know, our brains started to get thinking. So yeah, it was late. Yeah, yeah. It was about maybe like two thirty, three o'clock. At nothing this. ever, nothing good ever happens after midnight. No. Coach Smith used to say that, and, and this, this is one of those stories where. Nothing good was happening after midnight. For sure, nothing yeah. good. So, yeah, bro, we're like... I have a question. Like, did you name the duck? No. Damn. We didn't name the duck, bro. Damn, we didn't okay. name the duck. I would But, uh, yeah, we should have, but it gets better. So, we're like... Uh, you know, the party's starting to get over. I think someone called the cops. Cops are coming. For sure. And, um, late. Cops are always coming. But we're like, we need to take, like, some of these ducks. I grab a duck. He grabs a duck. He grabs a duck. Now I'm walking out. I walk out with this duck, and you know they're breaking up this party, bro. Just people start coming up to me like, "Yo, you got a duck?" I'm just like, oh, "I gotta think of something," you know. I'm like, you know, because I have a, a live duck in my mm -hmm. hand. You know, girls are coming up like, "Oh, like they're so cute." I'm like, they're like, we're, we're "Like what? You have a duck?" I'm like, you know, y'all, I I found him on the ground. I just picked him up. Like mm -hmm. I just picked up this duck. Like I don't know. I just found him. So we're like trying to figure out, you know, what's going on. Everyone's leaving. We see this pickup truck. We're like, dude, we don't got no ride home. Like, let's jump on the jump in the back of this pickup truck. They're driving back into town, you know. They're and driving it's to campus. In the morning and it's and are intoxicated. In the back of a pickup truck, yeah. you know, with, with four a duck or five that you didn't name, bro. We didn't name them. I can't believe it. But we're in the back, you know. So it's really not your duck. Nah, you don't nah. name them. It's not your duck. You, you probably know. had a name. I didn't even think I could think that far ahead. You know, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. worried. I'm like, <laughs> at so, this point, you're driving in the back of a pickup at 2.30. Yeah, still chilling with a duck in my hand, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, oh, chilling in the back. I'm like, dude, this is crazy. You know, we're on the highway now, mm -hmm. and we're driving. And all of a sudden, you know, we don't even know who's driving this the truck. We don't even know who's driving. And uh, all of a sudden, we see someone pop out the, uh, you know, how you can open up the, the sliding glass to, the, mm -hmm. to a pickup truck, you know? Some dude's in the back. He he sticks his head out. He's like, yo, what the fuck? Why? You have my duck. Those are my ducks. Give me my duck. Dude, I'm like, we're going like 70 down this highway. I'm like handing over a duck like through this shit. I'm like, yo, 
that's while crazy. Driving? While we're driving? While we're driving, just do the thing, you know? See, that's... He's like... That's Peter. I'm gonna call him. Pulls over. He's like, get, get the fuck out of my truck. Oh, that was to the guy driving. That was his... Duck. That was his H- duck. His buddy. Some, someone was driving. Whoever was in the back, that was his duck, bro. Oh, my God. Yeah, bro. We got caught. Y'all thought you guys were about to take yes, this duck home. Yes, bro. Yes, duck. Damn. We got caught up. And he's like, get, get out of my truck and... And man, we had to figure out. We weren't too far back from campus, you know. But they walk? were like, yeah, yeah, yeah we walked walk. back. It wasn't far. It wasn't far from campus. Like it was the perfect timing. But man, yeah, that was one of the crazier stories that I've had. Yeah. Yeah, I got yeah. a, I I got a couple crazy stories, but mine are my, my reputation in uh, college outside of the wrestling world was uh, a little bit, I guess you would say, a little bit more on the crazy side. Uh, you know, with the fights and the stuff like that. You know, the probably the craziest story I have, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm not gonna mention any names, but yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about it. So we were uh, this is this is a crazy story. When I was in college, we uh, I just turned 21. I I went to the bars with you know a group of friends. We're sitting there, we're having a good time, chilling. Everybody's chill, and then uh, I get a phone call from one of our senior captains and. Uh, he calls me and he's like, "Hey, you know, y- your brother got jumped. Your brother got jumped. We we're out here at the, I forget the fraternity, but we're at this house, you know. And everyone knew the house, so I was like, dude, I started freaking out. That's my brother, you know. And if he got jumped, then that's an issue, you know. So I call up uh, my my ex girlfriend at the time. I'm like, hey, you know, I need you to come get me. Brian got jumped at, you know, this frat's house. And so I get there." She comes and picks me up. I get there. I don't even take time. I'm like, there's everyone standing outside, all the wrestlers. There's like 10 wrestlers, not going to mention names. The fraternity's yeah. sitting out there. They're face to face, and they're like yelling at each other. And like, there's probably, there's, that's one of the big houses with the, with the, you know, they have stories mm-hmm. on this house. Yeah, real, and I'm like, uh, hey, man, who, who owns the house? You know, who owns the house? And, and my senior captain buddy, he's like, they they jumped your brother. They jumped your brother. And I said, you jumped my brother? And they were like, what are you talking And I just hit him. Boom. And it caused a riot. And uh, a couple of us, we you know, we, were, we chased a lot of these dudes down and beat them up. And then uh, there was a bottle of vodka was thrown at my buddy, and it hit him. So I was like, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna use you know weapons. So I grabbed this log and just smacked this dude in the face with it, and uh, I got in a lot of trouble for that. You know, I got in a lot of trouble for that. But none of the stories lined up with all the kids. Um, they were all you know underage drinking. So um, I never ended up getting in too much trouble with that. You know, I, that's one of the stories that. You kind of keep low key, but if we're gonna be up and honest about the craziest story in Stillwater, that the craziest part, the craziest part was me and uh, I'm gonna say his name. He don't care. Joe Schumacher. <laughs> yep. We, he don't care. He probably liked his name being mentioned. He's probably the craziest dude on our team. Funnest dude. Great guy. But he's he's pretty crazy. But sorry to interrupt you, Joe Schumacher. Was involved in my story as well, so that's just you know yeah. another. Joe's just another Joe's one. down for the ride. He's down for the cause, man. So we uh, good guy nonetheless, though. We uh, nonetheless. afterwards, I, Joe, I cut my man. hand open on a dude's tooth, and my hand was just bleeding. It was bad, and uh, so but the cops come. So me and Joe, I'm like about to jump in the car, and Joe's like, "No, we gotta run," which he Bro. gets you to do stuff like this. So. Yeah. We're running. I got brand new jeans on that I couldn't afford. I got some uh, some Cortezes on. I was a big Cortez guy when I was in college because um, I could afford them. And then uh, so we're running down this like river. I'm getting all my jeans are soaked. My my shoes are soaked. We run all the way to my my it's buddy's house, shit. which is probably yeah. about five six miles. I mean we ran a long way, and I'm bleeding everywhere, and my phone's dead. His phone's broke. And we get back to my buddy's house, and as soon as we get there, I go in and change into some sweatpants he had. Cops knock on the door. Cops knock on the door. They ask me, you know, what happened and da-da-da. But anyways, nothing ended up happening with that. I actually talked to some of the kids that um, – I had class with some of the kids that was involved. I came to class. Some of them had black eyes. And uh, it was pretty – it was pretty – it was really an awkward situation for me. But 
yeah, nothing ended up happening with it. I think I, I you know, I've actually probably had a couple shots with those guys later on, and you know, because that was so early in my college career. Um, but yeah, man, that was that was a crazy story. Coach Smith got involved. You know, it was like a it was a big deal. I thought there was a chance that I was going to get kicked out of school for that. And uh, but that's my crazy story. And I have other crazy stories too. We can name a bunch, but um, that's that's definitely mine. But as uh, you know, to to go into the the wrestling and uh, the wrestling world, what's your favorite moment? You know, and it doesn't have to be college; it can be high school; it can be kids. Uh, what's your favorite wrestling moment? Um, like ever in my whole lifetime? Yeah, your whole any anything that you Man, can go back this is and a, be like, this is when 100%. this is when things changed for me as a wrestler. We'll get yeah. more in depth. Like, yeah. w- there was there a match, a practice. There was. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I'm gonna go back to the very start of wrestling, and uh, the reason why I, I fell in love with wrestling so soon was I remember my dad being like, "Hey, you know, as a kid I was little, you know, short little kid, you know, I didn't weigh very much, just mm-hmm. you know, a little dude, but you know, probably had some athletic ability." My dad thought that. You know, I, I played football, you know, I played baseball as a kid. I would have ran your ass. You know, over. no, I, I see that's the Look thing. We would probably be are. the Yeah, but see I'm small but I was the same size as I am, you know. So you weighed so, hundred and sixty n- pounds not, when you were no, seven years nah, old. Nah, not seven, but that's crazy. All right, you probably were I a little ran bigger. Your ass than, over. Whatever, probably not. But so Probably had a little I remember, girlfriend. I probably ran over and talked to her after I. Nah, see, I would, I would probably ground. stiff arm you to the ground, and winked <laughs> as I ran in for the touchdown. <laughs> like, check me out, yeah, check me out. You probably wore double zero. No, I wore uh, <laughs> number eighty-one, Marvin ooh, Harrison, ooh. and uh, Marvin Harrison was eighty-eight. I think. Eighty-eight, sorry, yeah, eighty-eight. So you don't even know. Yes, Tory Holt no. was eighty-one. We could talk football, but you all lose. Eighty-eight, you. Marvin Harrison. Sorry, okay. my bad. <laughs> and then uh, who else? What what else number did I wear? Uh. Yeah, two maybe number two. You don't even know. Derek Go Jeter, back to yeah, your wrestling stories. You all over. Well, you got me. You got me going, man. You got me in all different <laughs> so, kind of places now. So man. you're you. You're, so so yeah. my first wrestling story. This is what like started me out in wrestling. And, uh, uh, my first wrestling practice ever. I remember like, showing up like and being like, you know, what is this? Like this this is different. You know, not knowing. Like what this stuff is I didn't watch WWE None of that You know So I'm like no, Coming into that. here Like Thinking like I, I don't know what this is Like not knowing anything But Remember my dad Putting on my shoes for me And uh You know My dad putting on his shoes I'm like Oh like, He's gonna practice too mm-hmm. I remember running My dad running next to me So Like I see my dad Like doing all this stuff I'm like If my dad's doing this Like I can do it too So Like that always stuck with me You know my dad Did my with he, yeah, that's he did cool, my man. first wrestling yeah, practice yeah, yeah. ever like with me. He was me. with you. Yeah. But really, like, really what was happening is, is you were the crier on the team. Nah. So your dad had to hold your hand. Nah, you hell no. Nah. Yeah, nah, that was probably you. <laughs> no. see, see, me, I my started out practice, young. I wore a wife beater and some je- uh, jean yeah. shorts. Yeah, those are the guys who cry in practice. No. Yeah, well, yes, those are the dudes are. that no. have that dog. Because I, I wrestled those guys yeah, and I, they were crying all the time. If your dad is in that practice, you know, that's cool. But you were the kid that was over there like, I can't do this uh, without no. you, daddy. Hell no. Uh, no, that was my first practice that's ever. that's cool, man. Yeah. And um, he, he gave you the confidence yeah, to do yeah. it. Yeah, and that's then awesome. Ever since then, I was like, this is my shit. You yeah. know, this is my thing. I play football. I love football. That was probably my true, honestly, a lot of people don't know. That was my, like, first true love at, of, of a sport mm-hmm. was football. You know, yeah. I wanted to go and actually my dream was to play safety in the nfl you yeah. know because i was little you know so i'm like i don't so, whatever so you say man, man. you know so whatever um, but um yeah that's man. Dope, though man that's awesome first practice with my dad like that threw him on threw on the shoes threw on the shoes for me he started running around practice with me I was like yeah i can do this shit that's you know? awesome what about I think you mine is uh man my first year i was terrible this yeah, is, me too. Man. I was uh, I, I won one five. match. I beat a dude named Tanner Sutherland. That was my only match I won the first year, and uh, I remember, you know, my dad was pretty upset. He just hated it, man. I, I started wrestling sixth grade. Let's be so honest. I Did late. you cry? 
Did I cry? Yeah. Oh, I was a crier. <laughs> I'd throw my fucking headgear. I'd run in the back, tell everybody, you know, I, this is your fault. I lost. I hate you. Why are you make me do this? I was playing soccer. I was good. This is, that was fun. That was so much fun. You know, no, you didn't even care. Now all of a sudden you care. It's like, yeah, man, you know, dads and sons in the wrestling world. Different that's game. That's a big deal. Different so, game. Yeah, man, I, uh, I didn't win very much. And then I remember, I can tell you the practice that it all kind of clicked for me and it's it, it's so crazy and i'm sure a lot of wrestlers have this but i was doing my dad made me do i wrestled three times a day i'd go to a club practice yeah. i would do my dad's junior high coach what i'd do his junior high class in the morning before school and at, in lawton they did class your wrestling practice before school so practice was like 6 a.m so i would do practice with them then i would do high school practice after yes. school and I wrestled wow. a dude named Ramon Willis, who was a state champ. And I was sixth grader. I was about the same size because he was a three pounder. And uh, dude, this dude used to beat my ass. And then I'd cry there every day. And then I'd go at night. And they had two kids that used to beat me up. And you know, and I never really could beat them until man, I had one practice. My dad made me stay after that, and I did stance in motion on mm -hmm. one of those uh, dummy dummy things you know yep. what i'm talking about yep. i don't know what they're called but yeah yeah they're like drilled into the wall yeah drilled in the wall they have like legs and yeah. stuff mm -hmm. i did stand some motion for like an hour and for some reason bro i don't know what happened but something clicked mm -hmm. and the next day i started taking dudes down that i never took down i started beating guys literally like the next day and then that next year i ended up placing uh, second at state nice. so yeah. um that's probably my my favorite wrestling story and uh you know, I think uh, yeah, with that, I think we close it out. And, uh, yeah. you know, we're going to be back next week. We're going to we're gonna start uh, doing podcasts with me and Nick. Um, we're going to have episodes coming out every week. So you guys tune in. You know, go follow our pages. Um, Nick Piccinini. Nicky yes, Pitch. Sir. Nicky Pitch 96 um, on Instagram, on Twitter, Nick Piccinini, on TikTok. Uh, and then Nick Piccinini MMA on YouTube. And uh, yeah, man. And That's... mine's just Kyle Crutchmore on all all across. And then uh, we're gonna we're gonna uh, post something. We're gonna develop an uh, Instagram page and a YouTube page for uh, you know moving forward with this. So thanks for thanks for tuning in, guys. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna do some fun stuff with this. So yep. Keep subscribe and keep watching. Yep. Locked in. Yep. Podcast out. <laughs>